Hey, hey, Marcus House with you here today. Some very exciting news because Kerbal Space Program 1.7 has just been released. This update is called Room to Maneuver, and as the name implies, as it says here on the screen, it's full of new features and improvements to help guide your rockets through space. This includes a whole bunch of different tools that previously you've had to have mods for, and it beautifully integrates these tools in with your flight screen and map screen, so you don't actually need MechJeb and all these other mods to do these things anymore. Along with that, we've got a whole bunch of other improvements along with new revamped parts. Also, a few little uh, rebalancings by the looks of it. Of course, no update is complete without a whole bunch of bug fixes and that sort of thing. We're not going to pay too much attention to those, but you can open up this screen as soon as you download the new version of the game and skim through all this in much more detail. So we'll just close this off here and you'll immediately see the background texture of the screen here has a much more beautiful galaxy texture there. So that's something I noticed straight away. I do wish that they would uh, put a little nicer textures on Kerbin just as a default. Even if you're just in high quality mode, that would be cool. We're just going to start off a new game. We'll just pick our uh, sandbox mode and pick a flag. There we go, no problem, just normal difficulty, doesn't matter, we can show all this stuff just in sandbox. So I'm going to start off here by just going to the vehicle assembly building and we'll just check out some of the new parts. We'll get rid of all these default welcomes and uh, I've just pre-created just a little truss structure here so that we can quickly pop these on. So the first thing we're looking at here is the Twitch engine. This is the 2477 and we've now got a couple of variants. We've got the gray, orange and the orange. And if we compare this to Kerbal Space Program 1.6, you can see some of the stats on this engine have changed. Before the ISP at sea level was 250, now it's 270 and the uh, thrust has had a slight bump as well. The Ant engine here now has a few variants. We can see here uh, just looking at the stats that they haven't changed from 1.6 as far as I can see. Uh, but we now have this bare variant of it, so you can actually take all the shrouds away, which is kind of cool. And I couldn't see any difference in stats at all with Kerbal Space Program 1.6 for this engine, or any of the others actually, so I'll stop uh, mentioning 1.6. So we then have the Spider engine here, that as well has a new bare variant, similar stats, oh, same stats I should say, as before, but we do now get to remove that shroud, which is really cool, and we also have got just higher quality textures, and a bit of a nice re-rendering here of the Puff monopropellant engine there. Moving on from there, we then have the RCS thruster block. This is definitely the most common uh, RCS control that I use in any of my vessels, so it's great that this has had a revamp. Just again, lots of nice new detailed textures there. They've also done a bunch of nice updates here to the textures on the Place Anywhere linear RCS port. These little suckers are really tiny, so it probably doesn't make sense to make the textures too high quality on this, but it's definitely had a nice revamp. We then also have got the Verna engines. I really love to use these Verna engines on much larger vessels. They're quite powerful in terms of RCS control, so nice that they've also had a pretty cool revamp. Just zooming in there so you can see that nice and clearly. And on top of this, we've got some new nose cones for the very large tanks. We have the Mark 12A there, which I think comes with the regular game, and then the, the largest here, the Mark 16A, that only comes, I believe, with the Making History expansion for some of the huge tanks in the Making History expansion. Now, one thing that I really wanted to see, and I was sure that we might get it, but no, is some large solid rocket boosters. I've been wanting to make replicas of the Space Shuttle and the SLS for so long without needing to use mods and still we can't do it. We've got to like cram all these small boosters together into weird tubes and shapes just to get these things off the ground. I've even tweeted about it with quite a large response and still nothing. Anyway, let's get on to the important stuff, talking about the best part of this 1.7 update. You will see down here in the bottom corner a little purple button, the Maneuver Mode. And let me just uh, quickly boost up my UI scale here, wherever that control is. Come on, come on. There you are. That's a bit bigger. Whoa, that's, that's a lot bigger. Let's go with that. So now you can clearly see the figures here. You can see we can now see our apoapsis, we can see our periapsis, we can see our time to both of those nodes, which is really quite handy. And we can also see our orbital period, which will obviously make a lot more sense when we're actually in orbit. 
So we're just quickly time warping here through the footage going through the atmosphere. A very aggressive punch through the atmosphere there. And as uh, we actually add a manoeuvre node, you can see that we now have got this wonderful little manoeuvre node editor right here. Uh, we can just move back and forwards and we can even do it through multiple manoeuvre nodes there. So we can jump back and forth. We can see how many meters per second delta V we are thrusting in any direction. So if we had a normal or anti-normal, we'd see a positive or negative number there. And you can then even type in new numbers to modify that manoeuvre manually. It's very much like having a combination of Kerbal Engineer and also other mods like Precise Node all built into the game so this is great so I'm just launching another vessel here so we can demonstrate some of these new tools when actually trying to do an intercept with another vessel again a ridiculously aggressive punch here through the atmosphere and as soon as we get this vessel up into orbit we can actually start planning our intercept now normally the way we would do this is to just select the maneuver node on the orbit line and pulling the little maneuver node arms back and forth until we get it quite close but now we can fine-tune all this under this maneuver mode here so along with entering those maneuver numbers manually we've also got this graphical maneuver editor here and we can up the scale of this and tweak it just as we need to anyone that's used precise node would already be familiar with how this sort of works so this is really wonderful you can see there with just a little bit of tweaking I've got that intersect down to around one kilometer really easily now a few of the other little cool tools you get in this panel I'll just show here in a slightly different orbit this time um, you can see we have our approach info here so we can actually see the intersect information right in this panel and of course that just means you don't need to right click on the uh, the nodes which can be a little bit painful sometimes so we can come in here using all of these new advanced tools jumping back into the graphical editor here again and we can come back into these tools and tweak them and actually see the intersect one figures there coming down so I'll actually just bring this down quickly so that our intersect is again very close so you can see I'm just bringing that down using the retrograde adjustment there and then slightly adjusting the scale bringing it back up to get it really close to the target there so just toggling things back and forth I could actually do this faster in this editor than manually doing it which is which is really great Another great little feature here is that we can actually just make our maneuver node jump to the next orbit. So we can hit the plus button to jump one orbit at a time, or we can hit the minus button to take one orbit off. So this is incredibly handy if you're trying to intersect with the moon or another planet or anything like that. So after completing your maneuver node editing, you can then just complete the burn, of course. So we've got a small 10 meter per second burn here, and that's going to bring our intercept here down. And then it's just a matter of time warping until we're very close to the target. And then we'll just do a target retrograde burn to wipe off all of our relative velocity. So just coming up to the node there. And of course, I wasn't concentrating because I was so busy fiddling around with all these tools. I didn't realize I was flying straight past the target. So quick retrograde burn there. And then we'll just face towards the target, do a quick uh, 10, 15 meter per second burn. And we'll just approach that target very simply and easily. So yes, these tools are really, fantastic especially if you're a little new to Kerbal Space Program you can actually use all of these readouts and tools uh, just by default without having to worry about trying to figure out how to install mods and all that sort of thing and of course we're not only talking about us gamers that play this all the time we're also talking about additions such as educational versions that might be being used in schools um, schools of course have got their computers locked down there they don't have people installing mods all over the place they want all of their installs clean so just having these utilities here is is just a really great thing. Now, another one of the great little tools in this maneuver editor, which is really quite wonderful, and I hadn't actually spotted it initially, so it took a little while to spot it, um, is the one which will allow you to place your maneuver backwards and forwards around the orbit. So I'll just quickly show you the intercept here. We can use these little arrows to basically move that maneuver node backwards and forwards along the orbit. So kind of like increasing the entire orbit, but just a tiny fraction of an orbit instead. And again, that scale control allows us to to finally adjust what we want to do there. So if we wanted to slightly change our uh, timing for our burn, we can actually zoom into the body here and just adjust this as we're looking. So this is much easier than trying to grab the arms of the controls from way over around the uh, surface of Kerbin there. 
Now, for those of you with a keen eye, you have probably already spotted this new little toggle here. This actually toggles us between sea level altitude and ground level altitude. So you can see it's jumping all over the place here as Jebediah here screams over the surface of Kerbin. So you can see the altimeter there fluctuating quite wildly as we pass over different levels of terrain. And then of course, if we actually time warp over to the ocean, you'll see that the fluctuations stop and everything remains fairly constant like we see here. Now, of course, this is most useful when coming into land on the surface of a planet, especially using things like aircraft. So wonderful additions to the game. In fact, I can't help but feel since Simple Rockets 2 came out that Kerbal Space Program developers have really been trying to put a lot of this quality of life style of enhancements into the game. Of course, there's plenty of other bug fixes and things to read through in the change logs as soon as you get hold of this 1.7 version of the game. For now, that is about enough from me on the 1.7 update. A massive thank you to my very dedicated quality control squad listed here. They donate their time to me to help quality control all my stuff, so thank you. In the tile in the bottom left today, we have the huge Falcon Heavy Orion Exploration Mission 1 simulation. So it turned out to be just a little bit of a controversial topic, so check that out. In the top right is my latest video, and in the bottom right, a video that YouTube has chosen from my channel just for you. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you all in the next video.